Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. We are in the thick of the 2020 Olympic Games, and we are bringing you the best athletes, the best Olympic icons to break down what they're seeing from these Tokyo Games. Today, we are sitting down with backstroke legend, four-time Olympic champion, Lenny Kreiselberg. Hey, Coleman. Good to be here. Really excited about our conversation. It's been, it's been fun watching the Games. Definitely brings a lot of great memories. time champion i'm sure it does bring a lot of great memories um what has there been anything so far in this games that stood out to you just just right off the top of your head well you know i just think the quality of swimming has been quite impressive you know the times have been good listen this is an uncharted territory for for everyone and for especially for the athletes that are participating there this is it's it's tough it's the you know all the covid restrictions not having any fans uh, I understand the weather is pretty humid there. It's just just a lot for uh, finals being in the in the morning. You know that's obviously not not a common thing in in our sport. So there's a lot of various factors that um, swimmers don't usually um, are used to. So to be able to see the quality of swimming in the times, it's it's been actually quite impressive. I I, I couldn't agree more with you, especially the depth of some of these fields. I mean, what it takes to make finals compared to even five years ago in Rio has, has just been astronomically faster, uh, which, which is pretty crazy. Um, obviously you were a backstroke champion. You, backstroke was your thing. What have you made of, of the men's 200 back that was just last night and the men's hundred back it was a few nights before that. Well, you know, it, it it was obviously a little bit sad not to see Ryan win uh, both of those races. You know, I'm a huge Ryan fan. Uh, he he's just been an, an incredible ambassador for for USA swimming, uh, continuing our backstroke tradition tradition in the United States. But you know, st- speaking with Ryan, he's definitely he gave it his all. You know, he I I thought he had. Uh, good races in both the 100 and 200 I really strategically swam them well um unfortunately there was someone uh, that was better than him on that particular day and uh or th- those days and sometimes that's how it goes in sports but um overall you know the the 100 back took was pretty fast if you take look if you take a look at the whole field um, I didn't think that 200 backstroke uh, was that fast uh, besides the first four guys. So it's quite interesting that there is a, there is a major drop off there uh, just in the second tier of the finalists. Uh, and then obviously if you go into, you know, deeper pool, um, I just don't think that two back is as fast as I was expecting to be. Yeah. I, I, I don't think the 200 back as an event is as fast as I kind of would have expected it to be at this point. Uh, I mean, 153, 154 is, I mean, those are obviously legit times, but you know, we saw Pearsall go 151 12 years ago now. Um, and, and, you know, we, we, we had seen Pearsall and Lochte going 153, 152 uh, you know, again, 12, 13, 10 years ago. And so, um, to, to see, to see those times still kind of be around that area. And then again, like you said, that second tier to be at 156, 157 is a little surprising. Um, d- what do you attribute that to? What- that, uh, you know, as you're recapping this, I'm trying to think why, I mean, it's really, I, I don't have an answer. It, it I, I, I don't know. It, it's not, you, we all in the sport of swimming and those that swim backstroke know and realize how tough that event is just, just strategically, you know, it's obviously not a long distance event and it's not a, a sprint. So to be able to swim in the right way, it, it's hard because in backstroke, if you go out too hard, and you put too much pressure on your legs, you're done the last 50. 
And if you don't go, don't go out fast enough, then you're there hovering around 156, 157, 158. I mean, you saw a lot of 158s too. So it, it's very interesting. And, uh, you know, like you mentioned, I think the, the time that Aaron swam and was swimming all, over a decade ago makes it that much more impressive what he was able to accomplish back, back in, you know, 2000 eight, nine, 10. Uh, ag agreed. I mean, it's, it, <laughs> yeah, which, which, which again, guys haven't really been able to get close to, I don't think we've even seen a 152 in a decade uh, or, or, or close to it. Um, but it, it's really interesting how each 200 of stroke is so different and how you have to approach it. And, and, you know, we, where you've seen the 200 breast get lowered a lot. You know, a lot of guys are now 206. Um, and then, you know, with Millock and the 200 fly, we, we're seeing that event kind of go down um, and, and the depth of that field kind of creep up. So it'll be interesting to see if maybe we can have someone uh, in that 200 backstroke really, really push the envelope in, in these coming years. Um, obviously, I wanted to see Ryan Murphy win in both those backstrokes. Um, and I want to get your perspective as, as someone who did, who achieved what Ryan Murphy did. You won three gold medals in 2000 and you came back in 2004 as the defending champion in the hundred backstroke. Um, and I wanted to, you know, just what, what is, what is coming into the Olympics knowing you were the defending champion and maybe even knowing that, that, uh, that, that other people may have caught up to you at that point or, or that, or that the field might be tighter than the last time yeah it's 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 a great question you know for me i was in a little bit different situation because between 2000 and 2004 i had a number of injuries and i was never healthy enough to to race the best in the world um i, I don't think i went to a single international competition uh in between those years because of wow. the shoulder surgeries and knee surgeries so okay. it's a little harder for me uh to comment on that but i i could tell you that uh you whenever whenever you're the best in the world you you have that uh pressure uh, and that everyone else is uh you know gunning for you and it's just it comes with the territory and you you know it that's where you kind of step in and step up and you evaluate your races and you evaluate where you can get better and how you can improve but at the end of the day listen if you can leave it all in the pool and uh know deep down in your heart you you left it all there and you prepared well at the end of the day, that's all you can ask of yourself. You know, I, in, in 2004 at the games, uh, Aaron won and, you know, second place beat me by two one hundredths and third place beat me by one one hundredth of a second. So uh, it was a very close race, but if that's what it was on that particular day, I mean, there, there is, there is no regrets. I, I just think, most important um, element is never taking things for granted and understand that once you get to the top, you just have to approach your preparation and training uh, w without ever taking anything for granted, more so than on your path to the top. That's a, that's, that, that's a great point. Um, yeah, because again, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about swimming your race that day. And, uh, and I was thinking about this, the Olympics the other day, if you win a gold medal at the Olympics, people remember that forever, but it's just like any other swim meet, <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's like, it, there's nothing that makes it tougher besides the environment and the pressure that like media put on it. But if you go a world, a world ranked number one time, people forget about that. You know, and even if it if it's enough to win that Olympic medal or or break if you break a world record, people are still going to remember that gold medal a lot more. Is that? I don't want to ask if if that seems fair to you, but is that ever something you considered when while you were swimming, or, or you consider now? Um, 
I, I think the way you said it is it's so true. I mean, I think in anything we do in life, the, the, the more we're able to get to fundamentals and simplify uh, the process, I, I feel that the easier it is to perform at, at your best. And if you're able to put yourself into an environment where this is a 50 meter pool, this is a hundred backstroke that I've done so many times. And uh, if you can do that mentally, obviously, you know, that takes a little bit of a pressure off emotionally, you know, takes that um, edge off the nervousness. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be nervous. You're going to be anxious. That, that's just human nature when you're in the moment like that. But uh, if you're able to mentally uh, put yourself in, in, a, in an environment where this is, this is just another swim meet, and I've done this so many times, um, I think it, it makes it a little bit uh, easier to, to manage the, the magnitude of, uh, of what you're doing and, and the moment, the, you know, make it easier to absorb the moment that you're in. Yeah, that, I bet we talk about that a lot in, in swimming, I think just simplifying it, remembering it's just another swim meet, it's just on our backstroke. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you, Coleman, it's obviously a lot easier said than done when you, when you're uh, right there in that moment, um, you know, for me personally, and maybe it's kind of a cliche, maybe I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just easier to talk about it now, but I've always uh, in moments like this, I always uh, reflected back to life in general, that this is not a end of the world. You know, it, there's so much more to life than, than swimming uh, or whatever other sport you're doing in that particular moment and you're on that stage. And I think if you can, again, surround your thoughts and emotions that there is so much more to it than that particular moment in time, I think it makes it easier to, to manage the situation. Yeah, uh, I, I certainly agree. You know, you just got to zoom out for a minute. Um, I wouldn't know. I've never been in that situation, <laughs> but it makes sense to me when, when you say it. <laughs> um, so I want to, I want to dive into this, um, 200 backstroke race for just a little bit. Uh, Ryan Murphy it seemed like, like you said, he swam a very controlled race and you could tell that he was, he was trying to ride Rylov's hip um, and then really give it everything he had that last 50. So again, it seemed like he swam a really good race. What did you see out of that race? Um, especially him riding that lane line is that, is that something that's easy to do in backstroke? I know freestyle, especially for the relays, we talk about, oh, you know, we're riding their wave, but it's like, but you're not on your back. <laughs> right. Is that, is, is that something that, that, uh, that, that backstrokers think about or is like, oh yeah, I can do that pretty easily? Yeah. I mean, I, at this level, of course, we, we were able to see our uh, kind of surroundings where we are and how to be able to ride the, ride the lane line. Um, and with your peripheral vision, especially when you're swimming next to someone, you can, you can see like based on the wave uh, where that person is. So I, I do think Ryan swam strategically a really, you know, a good race. Uh, do I think he might have should have been out a little bit faster? Uh, possibly. But again, I, you know, it all depends. It's easier to look on TV and, and you know, comment that he should have been a little bit faster. So give himself a, a, a shot early in the race. But you don't know how someone feels on that particular day, right? You don't know physically. Uh, are, you, are you in a state where you feel you can go out a little bit faster. What is that going to feel like on that last 50, that last 25, that last 25 of 200 backstroke is painful. I've experienced that many times. So I do think he's from a good race. I, I do think he was smart how he rode the wave on that second 50. I, I know he tried to do that also uh, on the third 50. Um, stayed on the water pretty well. I think when Aaron um, and I were watching the race yesterday and were commenting, you know, I, I thought that last turn should be, uh, 
should be an important turn for him and trying to stay on the water as far as he can. The challenge is, is that Ruloff is also a really good underwater uh, swimmer and stays under pretty much all the way to, up to 15 uh, meters. So, you know, and then the, the tempo of Ryan's last 50 was good. He's just tightened up just there a little bit at the end. Um, again, I, I thought it was a good race. Uh, could he have gone out a little bit faster? Maybe. I don't know what that would have, how that would have affected him, um, you know, in the back end. Because, you know, that was a good race for with the guy from Britain as well. So, I mean, he was right there in that race. So it was really a three-man race. Yeah, and I feel like Green Bank uh, really, we can depend on him for having that back half speed. Uh, pretty consistently, but um, yeah, I mean, I think that's the first time I've really seen Murphy look as controlled as he did on that first hundred. I think normally he goes out a little bit, a little bit more aggressively. Um, but you know, hat, again, hats off to him. He swam. It, it looks like he executed the race he wanted to. Just didn't didn't get the place that he wanted right. to. Yeah. But But um, you know, no silver's great. Silver, silver is something to be very proud of. Uh, so, so Rylov made the backstroke sweep, um, just just as you did, just as Aaron did, just as Ryan did in sixteen. What? Uh, how does that make you feel? What do you What do you feel like that says about backstroke that we've seen all the all these dominant figures through through uh, through the Olympics that have been able to make this make this sweep in the last couple decades. Listen, I mean, it's obviously not an easy double um, to to be able to win, especially, uh, you know, I believe it's com two completely different races. Um, and it's actually interesting that Rilov has been, um, but he, he's pretty uh, versed. You know, he swims, he was on that four, uh, four by two relay. I mean, he's got a good hundred uh, freestyle. So he, he's definitely a, a very talented swimmer. Um, and has been around for the last couple of years. It's not like he's new to the scene. So he's been um, swimming better and better. Um, listen, at the end of the day, now it's all a matter of just consistency. Can he keep that up and can he continue to, you know, uh, maintain that hold of being the best in the world at, at this time? Uh, but certainly if you look at his uh, Olympics, the, these Olympics, he he he's been really good, and not just in backstroke, which is which is makes it uh, impressive. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of swimming to be done, and he has swam quite a bit and been consistently really fast. I we had seen him on the four by one free relay before, and he had pre and he's performed spectacularly for Russia in that. I didn't realize he could go up to the two hundred and 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 give them a one forty five low split and. Uh, and, you know, help him, help him to a medal. It's like, Oh yeah, that, that one threw me off guard a little bit. And it was, you know, right in the middle between the hundred and 200 backstroke. Right, right. Um, does, does the order for the events matter? Do you think, do, I mean, going from hundred to 200, does that make it more difficult than if it was 200 than hundred? No, I, I think the hundred, I, I like the hundred uh, being first. I think the order, um, actually, I, if the 200 was first, I think it takes a little bit more out of you, uh, especially 200 backstroke. Uh, so uh, it, it changes how you then swim the, the, the hundred or how much you have left in the tank. So um, I, the, the current order is actually, I, I like the hundred better. But I also want to, you know, it's also interesting just to observe overall, and we can say same thing about Caleb, is that when you're swimming fast times, no matter what event you're swimming, it just gives you confidence that you're ready. So whenever you're going to jump in the pool, man, whatever, time, whatever race you're going to swim, you're just going to swim fast. And you could tell when Caleb won, won that 100 free and with the time he won, you know, it just showed in the way he swam his 100 fly yesterday. It was just so smooth, right? He's just riding this wave. He's on top of the wave and just riding it. And you can say that for, for most swimmers at this level, in a moment like this, is when you're, when you're feeling good, it doesn't matter what, what any race that you're going to swim, you're just going to do well. Yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> yeah, Caleb's. We we all thought Caleb's hundred free was going to be the the biggest shot he had to to lose a race, and so his hundred fly looked spectacular. Like you said, fifty free this morning. He's first seed by three tenths in the fifty. It's like oh wow, <laughs> he's yeah yeah. yeah. He, yeah, he's just he's now he's in the zone and all you, you what you need is just one race. What you need is that confidence that I'm ready, right? And I'm ready not just mentally, but I'm ready based on the times I'm swimming. Um and that's how I again, that's how I look at it. That's from my personal experience what I knew I swam a good time. It's just there was nothing that was going to stop me. Mhm. So I'm um, I'm curious if there's a juxtaposition there of, you know, say <clears throat> we can take Ryan Murphy, for example, but there, there's, there was a number of swimmers in this boat who come in as a, as a defending champion, whether that's world champion, Olympic champion, and then they have a good swim, but they don't, they don't defend their title. Right. It's like, is, is, how does, how does that measure up with, with bringing confidence of knowing, like, I just swam a really good race and like, that was good for me. But, but I, there, there's also that part where it's like, I really wanted to win. I wanted to win this title and I didn't do that. Well, I, th I think it's for each person. It's, it's individual, you know, how you evaluate that. I mean, at the end of the day, when you look, we, we all, I guess, compare ourselves to our best times, right? You always want to swim your best. You always want to perform your best time you've ever done. It's a lot harder to do it in an Olympic stage with all the pressure, but at the end of the day, it's like you got to look within yourself and say, you know, I've swam a particular time in the past. How have I done it? Can I do it again? If I swim slower, you know, what is my satisfaction level? Am I okay with that? You know, based on all the other circumstances, maybe that happened this particular year, my training, you know, you've been around the sport long enough to understand it, it's hard in our sport to hit your taper um, perfect every year, every season, uh, especially when you're at this level, especially when you've done it for so long, it, there is always a, that margin of error just, just because that's human nature. So it, I, I do think it's, uh, it's up to each individual person just to evaluate where they are in that particular season uh, and how they're swimming and how the times are reflected in that. Obviously, to a casual viewer, we're only looking at the results, right? That, 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 that's all that matters. I mean, that's just the name. That's our human nature. We just look at results. Like you were saying, it's like number one, two, three times don't really matter because, the, well, first of all, mo most people, 99.9% .9 of people wouldn't even understand what it means to swim a particular time. So um, yeah, it's, it's all uh, individually how they assess their, their particular, um, uh, races in a, in a particular moment in time. Were you ever in a situation like that where you feel like you swam a good race, but, but the place wasn't what you may have wanted? Um, I'm thinking maybe not. I'm thinking you just won every time. <laughs> I, I did win a lot of races. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I mean, the times that I, I maybe didn't win, um, those were moments, um, you know, I just, maybe the healthy, I wasn't, uh, I just wasn't a healthy at that time. Um, but, I mean, but I was talking actually yesterday with Aaron, one of the races that he beat me right before Olympic trials in 2000. And uh, yeah, I mean, at that time I was really dominating the 200 backstroke and I just swam a race and, you know, was leading by over two seconds up to 150 and basically stopped. <laughs> basically because I, I i mean my last 50 was three seconds slower than my typically what i would swim and just i was overtrained i was tired i was overtrained and it was just uh going back to the drawing board and i knew it you know it just really it, it was very uncommon to the way i swam so i knew there was something there i was feeling overall well and not that i was sick not that i had any injuries in that moment so it was something in 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 the preparation right something in training so I was just going back and assessing that and, uh, you know, tapering accordingly. Were you training with Aaron in the lead up to the 2000 Olympics? Well, we were just in, in that training camp. Uh, okay. uh, uh, yeah. In just training camp. Once we made the team, um, Aaron was coming, uh, Aaron was training in a very different program. Aaron was training with Dave Salo. I was training with Mark Schubert. 
<laughs> very different. It's, uh, <laughs> it's it's quality over quantity, basically. Um, yeah, I'm I'm looking at your bio and like internationally at major meets, you have two silver medals. One of them is in a medley relay. So it's like, I don't think that one was probably your fault because you won the hundred and tuner back at that meet. And the other is a, is a 50 backstroke in a world short course championships. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. In Greece, I think. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember that race? <laughs> you... uh, kind of. Yeah. I think that Neil won that race maybe or someone else. I don't even remember. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's see. Uh, 50. Yeah. Yeah. Neil Walker. Yeah. 399 Lenny 24, 24. Wow. I didn't realize Neil Walker was that. I thought he did freestyle. I didn't realize. No, Neil, Neil was the second backstroker in, in Sydney on a hundred. Okay. Oh, Neil was nice. dominating backstroker. Um, I think it was the first guy in the 45 in yards. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize that either. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so, okay. So you, yeah, you didn't, you didn't lose a whole lot because literally the rest of your medals are gold, <laughs> but, uh, that's good. Good for you, Lenny. He did well. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so is, has there been another race that stood out to you at all this games or a moment that, that, uh, has, has really been on your radar in, in terms of just, wow, that was a great race. Wow. That was exciting to watch or, or something interesting you noticed. Um, I think the 100 uh, free obviously was a great race. Um, that was, uh, it was just well executed by uh, Caleb. Obviously, he, he was in there. You saw, um, you know, Kolesnikov wa was right, right there. Uh, it, it was, I, I thought he was quite impressive because he, he had a lot of pressure on him to perform there. Um, listen, the 400 free, I mean, that kid out of, uh, Tunisia out of lane eight, yeah. uh, just, just, it was impressive. And it's not like he snuck in on those guys. I mean, he was in the race from mm -hmm. the start. And, uh, I would say that that is definitely a race that stands out for me. Just how the kid swam that race and, you know, how, uh, he didn't let the moment get to him. And obviously he had nothing to lose. And I think that's a perfect example of someone that uh, had no, had zero expectation. I would imagine, I mean, as a competitor, you want to go your best time. If you were going to ask him, did you think you were going to win an Olympic gold medal before he came to the Olympics? I I'm pretty certain he was, he was going to say no, but just the way he, he swam the race, he gave himself a shot. He was in it from the start. Uh, it's just impressive. And uh, uh, at this stage, at that moment, um, it was incredible. Obviously, I, I, I've always said that. I, I think the younger you are, the easier it is to, to swim at the, at the games like this uh, or in the moments like this, just because you, you, you're young. I don't think you fully uh, grasp the, the, the environment and the, the, the magnitude of, of what you're doing and where you are. Um, so but certainly was very, very impressive. That uh, Ahmed Hafnawi, man, that, that, yeah, that kid, that kid's name is going to be seared in our brains for a long, long time. Yes, absolutely. Just like you said, nothing to lose, gave himself yep. a shot. Does, does he train in the U.S.? That we, I've gotten that a lot. I, I don't think so. We've, we, we reached out to his coach, um, who I'm, who, who, who is not based in the U S I don't, I'm, I'm fairly certain. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's just, I don't, I don't know if he trains somewhere else, but um, yeah, he, he's, he will, will certainly be trying to figure it out soon. Yeah. That's quite <laughs> impressive. It really was. Uh, well, Lenny, it's always great talking to you. Always, always great getting your analysis and perspective on these races. I appreciate you taking the time. Any parting thoughts, on these last two final sessions of the Olympics before we sign off? Well, first of all, thanks for the time. I appreciate the conversation, really enjoyed it. Uh, listen, I, I think for, for the U.S., we just got to keep going. I, I, I really, I have been incredibly impressed with, with how well our U.S. teams has swam. Um, uh, 
I, I, I will be honest, after trials, I had some of my doubts in terms of how good we can be. Uh, we definitely stepped up, like we always do. And that, that is, once again, solidifies the fact that we're the, the best swimming nation in the world. And the depth is, is incredible. And uh, I'm just excited about the last couple of days. And we got to finish on the high. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.